from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and host of the Dr. John Deloney Show on the Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today. We talk about your life, and he does as well including relationships and boundaries and family and money. and oh, We're going to do it all today, and we're going to talk about you right in front of you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. The advice is free, and some say it's worth what you pay for it. 888-825-5225. One week from yesterday, John's new book hits, and that means you've got just a couple of days to get the Buying a non-anxious life book. Building. Building a non. Buy. I'd like to buy one. Buying the building. I'd like to buy one. Buying the book. Building a non-anxious life. I'm trying to get all these in one sentence here. It's it's (laughs) running on. And so there we go. The book is coming out. And if you buy it on a pre-sale, you get seventy-five dollars in free bonus items, including the ebook, the audio book, and one of John's talks. Uh, Instant access to that smoke, fire, and freedom that he did at one of our smart conferences. So jump in and get all of that before the book actually comes out next Tuesday. You don't want to miss this. And um, we are seeing record numbers of these books come out. I was just in a marketing meeting this morning here, and it's uh, the number of you that are uh, thinking that he may have something to say intelligent about this subject is amazing because he does. Uh, And the good news about this, it's not a psychology book that – will put you to sleep. It's actually on the shelf where everyone can reach it. Yeah, that's important for me to, um, you know, we've, we've got a world now where Stanford Medical School professors are able just to crank out a podcast and talk to each other. Some really high level stuff, some amazing insights into the human mind. And I often leave some of those exchanges like thinking two things. Wow, it's amazing. And all right, what do I need to do right now, right? So, and so this book is, I handed it to my my 13-year-old and said, well, can you read this, go through it? And he read it, and he said, Dad, I'll give you two stars. <laughs> and, then he, Whoa, and, they, and then he laughed. that's brutal. Um, but it's designed for everybody to be able to access it and read it, and then to, more importantly, implement a plan on how to make your life better. Because um, anxiety is not the problem. As it turns out, it's the alarm right. saying there's a problem. right. And that problem might be that your body's scanned the environment, recognized you're lonely, or it might be that you have tied yourself to a bank and they're telling you what what to do tomorrow. It might be that your marriage is falling apart. It might be that you've been trying to hold up the universe all by yourself for a long, long time. And um, there's several things that will set your alarm off. And um, we have an entire world designed around the idea that the problem's over there, the problem's over there, the problem's over there. And I'm challenging people to go look in the mirror and say, what can I do right now in my home or with my family or with my community and start making these things better right now? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Good stuff, folks. Check it out. Go to RamseySolutions.com and get it while it's hot. Building a non-anxious life. $20. It's a deal on a book. Today, I was looking at some uh, data the other day. Um, our publishing guys were bringing me. The average hardback book right now in America is $32. Really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't realize it has slipped up. We haven't raised our prices enough. and our, our, <laughs> Well, we haven't. Our, our cost of goods has gone up like 40% because paper's gone way up. Yeah. And uh, and we haven't raised our prices enough. And that's why I was in that meeting. They're trying to show me like you're, we're being doofuses. And so we're going to fix that. But uh, not right now. Right now you can get this for $20. Very cool. So that's pretty cool. Not 32 If this was coming out of another publisher out of yeah. New York, it'd be 32 right mm-hmm. now. That's that's what the deal is. That's the average price right now of a hardback advice book. Uh, so check it out. The phone number here is triple eight eight two five five two two five. Autumn is in Denver. Hi, Autumn. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave and John. How are you doing today? Better than we deserve. What's up? <laughs> so my husband and I have quite the conundrum. We've been together for fifteen years, uh, married for almost thirteen of those. We love each other very much, and we'd love to stay married. But we feel like we've tried everything when it comes to managing our finances, and we just can't seem to agree. The last step that we have not tried is divorcing our finances. So I'm calling to ask if we should divorce our finances. What would that get you? Well, let me give you a little bit more background. So we met at 21 and 24, respectively, and had equal amounts of student loan debt. So we both had about 20000 each. So we decided the easiest thing to do would be combine our finances. We were young. We didn't have any assets. So it just made sense. So 
However, we both come from very different financial backgrounds, and I tend to be on the offense, and he tends to be on the defense. And we both feel like we're pulling each other and dragging each other along on a path financially that we don't want to be on. He was pretty steeped in FIRE, the Financial Independence Retire Early Movement, and would prefer to spend less and retire very early. Uh, He's 39, I'm 36, first perspective. Uh, He'd like to be retired tomorrow if he could. And I prefer a slower burn. I'd rather make smart decisions, sound investments, and work harder and earn more to achieve our goals and lead maybe a more comfortable lifestyle. So So, if he retired today, what would he do with the rest of his life? Well, the things that he enjoys. He'd probably still make money, but that's always the question that I have asked him. So he's built a life he doesn't enjoy? Mm, Not necessarily. He just doesn't like to work. Hmm. So let me just cut to it. This ends in ash, Autumn. Because y'all aren't dealing with the core issue. The core issue is you're trying to live two independent lives next to each other in the same bed. And until you decide on, we want our life to look like this, and we're going to reverse engineer it starting today to build it together, you're going to be like Jim Halpert and Michael Scott. You're going to be co-managers of this thing, and then eventually it falls completely apart. Well, we've made it work for the 15 years, you know, that we've you been together. You absolutely have. And I had a 1994 uh, F-150 that I duct taped and glued together and made work for a lot longer than it should have. So you're saying there's not a healthy way to divorce our finances no. and stay married? And I'm going to tell you, the, the further along you go trying to pretend that... John, what, what John's saying is, is when you agree on your spending and saving goals... You've agreed on your life on your life and your values and you're not in agreement on those things. You don't have a husband, then you have a roommate. So we actually come up with a, a yearly budget, an annual budget. We do a P&L. Hey, hey, well, well, if you talking- want to do it, go do it. <laughs> we're but not you talk- called NAST us. We're not talking about budgets. We're talking about your budget reflects unified values and you don't have that. You have two independent people trying to live independent lives and call it something that it's not. Okay. So you haven't seen, I mean, I, I know there's other people out there that have, have separated their finances and say it was the best thing, you know, because. Oh, Lord Jesus. They, they can. Knock your lights out. You called me and asked me. They can say everything that they want. Great. Great. What I'm telling you is this isn't about money. Hear me say that it's not about your money. It's not about your finances. One of the key things we learned in studying 10,000 millionaires was none of them said, I drug my spouse into this, kicking and screaming. Almost all of them said, I had a unified plan with my spouse that caused us to be able to achieve these goals. You are dreaming. This is not going to happen. It's bad relationally, it's bad mathematically, it's bad financially. You're wrong. Don't do it. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by a hundred if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. John, in quotes, that's not his real name, in other words, <laughs> from Louisville, Kentucky, not his real place, in quotes. Big secret call coming in. So, mm-hmm. John, what's your question? Yes, sir. Um, well, about about two years ago, I, I won one of those uh, multi-state lottery drawings with a group of coworkers, and uh, I haven't told anyone uh, besides my wife. And besides one sibling, uh, no one knows. And How much? I, my, my question for you, um, after taxes, it was about $22 million. Holy crap. Uh, wow. Holy crap is the, is the wow. understatement of the century. Yeah. How old are it you? Was, it was a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm edging up on uh, about 50 years old. Okay. Okay. So, and so yeah, you haven't it, told it, anyone, and I've got some uh, guesses, but uh, why? Uh well, the first thing I did when, when I found out that a one was, was research, and it said, you know, that you get to read all those one in five people lose their uh, lottery winnings or go bankrupt within 10 years. And one of the things they all said was, you tell too many people and you get too many people at your door asking for this, that, and the other thing, asking for handouts and expecting you to pay for everything. Mm-hmm. So my wife and I made a conscious decision just to kind of keep it uh, under wraps. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, we, we've kept keeping it under wraps. Um, we haven't even told our two teenage children. Mm-hmm. And now I know that sounds strange, um, but we just don't want them to grow up uh, to be waiters, you know, waiting for us to die <laughs> so they can get our money. You know? That, that's fantastic, man. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. it Dad's been eating so, rat poison lately. I probably, hey, I yeah. honestly, uh, I... <sighs> I, wow. I, I'll spend the rest of the day imagining I'm you because this sounds just like a fun thing okay. to think about. Um, I don't think I would well, tell my teenage kids either. No, I, I'm okay with that. No, uh, they're, I, I want them to go figure out what they want to do in life yeah. and, and yeah. get, get go, going go on be the track. Somebody. And then I'll and then I'll let them know. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to keep it from them forever. But like, you know, our parents and stuff, we haven't told any of them. Um, we had we had a, another incident about a month after we won the lottery. Um, incident. I, I don't want to call it. My wife's great uncle passed away shortly thereafter, and he didn't have any kids and he was never married. And he left most of his inheritance to my wife and her siblings. Mm-hmm. So we've been able to use that as like our cover story for when we help people. Like I bought my mom a roof. I know, yeah. really, really nice of me. Yeah. But how, you know, when she says, "How can you afford this?" I just say, "Oh, it's great, Uncle Bob's money, Mom. He want he wanted us to do this, or yeah. you know, whatever. Uxle Bob's money is at least two x now. That's great. Yeah. Oh, uh, and Uncle you can Bob's get a you can get a de- have you got a decent car? I this, you're going to love me, Dave. Uh, my house was paid off before I won this. Yeah. My wife and I really have no desire to move. Good. Uh, we had just paid cash for two Toyotas before we. Uh, before we won this, and we still have them, we're not looking to upgrade to anything because they're perfectly fine cars. So okay, All we right. uh, we we are you still working? I'm not, I'm not. Are you still working? I am still. I am still working. Do you Isn't hate that it? Ridiculous. You no, know, it's not. Uh, no, actually, that's why I'm there because I kind of like my job. Okay, Good for you. I, I think you should I, keep I working. Yeah, yeah. It's going to make you a better employee because when have your you boss got, comes have in, have you gotten some great investment advice? I have, yes. Good. Uh, okay. I have, a, right. I have a team, as you can imagine. <laughs> okay. With this, you with need this a team. Money. You need a team. Yeah. Uh, so it's good. not a huge team. It's just it's a group, and they're 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 doing well. So doing a good job. Good. Okay. So, I like yeah, everything yeah. you're doing, um, and it's okay. not it's not anyone else's business. Right. That's what I hope. And um, I don't think you're being like. Uh, hermit in a cave weird unabama weird or something like that right i think you're just no. being wise because what you've what you've discerned is that some of the people in your life could not handle the equation correct that is in a, a very uh good assumption on your part <laughs> yeah and and so you're yeah, doing they, them a favor by not putting the strain on them including teenagers mm-hmm. so the only thing yeah. i can get close to is is that um, by the time my kids were teenagers, we had begun building substantial wealth. Mm-hmm. We had recovered from the bankruptcy. Rachel was born. So by the time Rachel's 16, it's, you know, 17 years since the bankruptcy. And we had, you know, I was a multimillionaire again. Okay. Mm-hmm. We could buy whatever car we wanted to buy. We could go on whatever vacation we wanted to go on and it wouldn't affect us. We had good money. Okay. Uh, but the kids had no idea. And our kids had a double problem. One is their dad's in the spotlight, 
and everybody mm-hmm. knows us, right? Because we're known yep. in the community um, and talks about money, no duh. A- and if they had that and they knew that we had millions of dollars as a teenager, I don't think they could have processed it. So they did not know. They knew we were okay with money. They knew we right. live the principles that we teach and we made them live the principles that we teach, but they did not know X number of dollars was the net worth, right? I only right. disclosed that to them after they graduated from college and I involved their spouses because by that time, two of them were married. And so I mm-hmm. sat down with three of my kids and two spouses, five of them, and we started unpacking what our estate plan looks like because they're adults at that point. And I told them up front, I said, listen, here's the deal. We don't own anything at our house. We're people of faith. So God owns a bunch of stuff. He's asked us to manage more than you know, and you're getting mm-hmm. ready to know now. And you get to decide how you're going to react to that. Are you going to react and continue to be productive and generous people? Or are you going to be, in using your words, and I'll never forget it, a waiter, right? Uh, Because (laughs) if you're a waiter, you're not going to get access to any of this. We're going to take it away from you. Because God wants you to be productive. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to be excellent in the marketplace. And he doesn't want this to destroy you. He wants you to have the opportunity to serve a lot of people with this wealth, including my grandkids to come. And so as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. And it's not our money. It's his. We're managing it for him. And someday you will take over the management, but you will not become the owner. If you think you're the owner, you won't get to take over the management. And we, that's how I unpacked it. And then when I unpacked it, I was really pleased that they weren't freaks. And they've continued ah. to live really good adult lives. And it, it's not ruined them that their dad has, you know, dad and mom have a bunch of money that they manage, you know, so uh, all that. So I think you can start to build some lessons into your teenagers now so that in five yeah. years when you have that conversation, they're ready to shoulder the weight of it. What do you mm. think, John? All right. Yeah, I, I think you can live by example, and I think you have a pretty remarkable opportunity to take your kids out when y'all are having taking them out to dinner and noticing a waiter that's struggling and call the waiter over and be really kind and then show your kids, let's leave a huge tip. You want to do that? And it might be a hundred bucks, which is nothing of, of what you got in the bank, but it's, it's, it's going to be a million dollars to a teenager. Right. And you can slowly right. plant the seeds of this is what generosity looks like. And when they, it's, it's kind of like those movies, you get to the end and it like the sixth sense, right. And it goes, doo, doo, and you realize, Oh no, I, I missed the whole story. And now I have the whole story. <laughs> One day when you sit down and say, Hey, I'm, uh, you know, that school that I paid for and you know, you and your wife are about to buy a house. I'm going to pay for your mortgage and here's actually what we're sitting on. And here's, I I like who I'm honored by who you have become. They're going to go, Oh man, I picked up all these lessons from my mom and my dad. They're also going to learn that money isn't what makes it isn't your identity. Your identity isn't being a great dad. It's a guy who still got up and went to work. It's a guy who still kept the same Toyota that he'd already paid with cash before. Like you're doing everything so right. It's so healthy. It's amazing. So healthy. Yeah. Mm. Man. Good Good for you. If you were were hiding this because you were freaking and you were weird, I would call call, call you out on it. You're wise. You're wise. I think in this case you're wise. My, my sister called me the other day and said, what was your big splurge? And my answer was patio furniture. I'm not a big, flashy guy. I, I, I don't. Well, I, I, mean, I, I, I think you need so to increase gradually the enjoyment yeah. of this money. Yeah. To, not, to, not, not in the name of the secret, not in the name of the spo- right. exposing the right. secret, right. but you need to increase the enjoyment and you need to increase your generosity factor systematically. Right. You need to say, all right, this year we're going to spend... Four hundred thousand dollars on this or that. Create some neat memories with your kids. Yeah, do do some things intentionally with this, without just kind of roll, rolling up an extra million bucks into the budget this year. You don't have to do that, although you've got it. But um, yeah, wow! Congratulations, brother. It's a very good, healthy view. Yeah. This is the Ramsey Show.
Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Thanks for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Cole and Abby are with us in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Hey, guys, how are you? Great. Excellent. <laughs> Happy to be here. Honored to have you. Where do you live? Uh, we live in Franklin, Wisconsin, which is about 15 minutes south of Milwaukee. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah. I love it. Very welcome to Nashville. Thank, Thank you. Good to have you guys. And how much debt have you two paid off? We paid off $195,994.09. I love it. <laughs> yeah. How long did this take? 34 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? We started at 134 and ended at 173 Very cool. What do you all do for a living? I'm an occupational therapist. Okay. And, and I'm a production manager at awesome. a CPG company. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Good for you guys. Wow. What kind of debt was the 196000 Mostly student loans. <laughs> yeah. We had about 10 in credit cards, about 23 in car debt, and the rest of it, almost $159,000 in student loan debt. Wow. Yeah. How ironic that this Sunday student loan payments start back, but not for you! No yes. way! Yes. <laughs> we know a lot of people that didn't pay any during the forbearance. Yeah, we I do think too. I can count on one hand, including us, the number of people that continued to pay and hammer yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah, we do too. Why We're did you do that? Because I can't, I mean, we sitting around here, obviously, we're, we're talking shop. It's like just mathematically. We've been, we've been trying reasons. to get people to do what you did. Why did you do it? <laughs> why did yeah. you do it? All your friends didn't do it. The government said we got yeah. you, and you knew they didn't. Like, why did y'all keep paying? Yeah, we're uh, in our 30s. We're old enough to know uh, you can't wait on the government. Uh, but the other thing is that we wanted to set ourselves up for our future, right? Someone bought us Financial Peace University for our wedding, and we sat down and talked about our whys, um, our baby girl we have now two months, three years ago when we started. You know, she wasn't in the picture, but we knew one day she would. And we didn't want to try to be buying a house and buying cars with cash and funding her college while having the student loan debt hang over our head. Mm -hmm. And me, the nerd, I did the math with the interest before the forbearance. It would have been a thousand dollars a month for 21 years for us to pay off the student loan debt. And that's not something either of us wanted to sign up for. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So how long have y'all been married? Three uh, years this past June. Okay, so you've been doing this the whole time you've been married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got married in June, and then because of COVID, we had like our reception in September. Mm -hmm. So it was in that uh, September reception. We'd already been married for four months when we got Financial Peace University. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, somebody gave you that as a gift yep. for your wedding. Yep. Yes. And then you, you went to the class. Yeah, it was virtual, virtual uh, during class. COVID, yeah, right? Course, yeah, it's course, COVID, yeah. yeah. But yes, we did yeah. the class, and um, we I've been listening to you for years before that. And we were Dave-ish, and this is how dumb I was, Dave. I thought, that's a really good plan for other people, yeah. not for us. Yeah. And even going into the class, we thought, well, maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't. After the first lesson or two, we were all in. We figured if we're gonna do it, we gotta do it all the way. 34 months later, here we are. We're on to three, and we're done yeah. with three. Now we're on to three B, so we're excited for so what's next. even taking it virtually, it sucked you into the vortex. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it did. I love it. Well, we're honored, man. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you. What did your friends say when you told them you are paying on your loans, and they, they roll their eyes at you? Yeah. Did they give it to you pretty good? 
oh yeah, um, why would you do that? The same thing with the credit cards. Um, what about the miles? What about the points? Mm -hmm. um, you can use that money for other things. And we just, I don't know, we were just together in it the whole way. And that was the surprising piece actually is how many people gave us schlack for yeah. it. Um, for having this be our plan. Did, so. that give, did that give you energy? Like, I'll show you. Yeah. I, I heard so many times people say, oh, me and my wife are debt free. Well, except for our cars. You'll always have a car payment. And we looked at them and said, then you're not debt free. Uh, <laughs> we've heard, you'll always have a student loan. And I look at them and say, you will always have a student loan. We will not no. always have a student loan. Uh, so it was very motivating. Yeah. And now um, you get to do Toby Keith. How you like me now? <laughs> that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. You should throw a party on October 1st. Just stay. Like I'll I'll get everybody dinner because I know it's gonna be a hard hard night for my friends. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we got no, we got no payments, so we can we're afford. We're having it. a celebration. You guys are having a funeral. All you guys right. that uh, we're hating on you. That's yeah. right. I love it. Yeah, just rub a little salt in the wound. That'd be great. Yeah. Good for you guys, Thank man. You. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. So who was cheering you on? Who were your cheerleaders? A lot of our family. Obviously, my mother's side of the family was the one who gifted us FPU, so they were huge in that. Um, some of our friends mm -hmm. actually introduced us to you as well and kind of kept along with us on the journey. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about it. Our, our good friends, uh, Brittany and Sam, I want to give them a shout mm -hmm. out because before we did this, we'd always go out on the town, going mm -hmm. out to eat, spending lots of money. Mm -hmm. We told them, hey, we're going to do this FPU thing, so we're not going out to eat anymore. And they said, that's great. You guys just come on over here. We'll grill out. We'll do things at the house yep. that are free. They were very, very supportive. I like that. That's, um, so a cool, cool, that's a cool group of friends right there. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. actually, you have a better time doing that than you do going to a restaurant. Oh, yes. Yeah, we yeah. had more Yeah, more fun. Yeah. 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 Way to go, guys. Thank I'm you. I'm so proud of y'all. Well, well done. Well done. Now, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt? You pay off $196,000 mm -hmm. in 34 months. It's not a theory. You freaking did it. Mm-hmm. Everyone can do it on paper, right? It's a lot harder to do in reality. Yeah. Um, I always say the hardest part is starting. The first two, three months when you're learning to budget and at the end of the month, you have this money. It's, That's true. It stinks to send it off to Navient or Toyota Financial or whoever. But for us, after those first two, three, four months, it became such a routine and such a habit. It honestly went by really quick just because we were yeah. like a well-oiled machine once we got in the monthly routine of budgeting and paying off It debt. became exciting, actually. Yeah. How much money are we going to pay off? How, yeah. much, how much are we going to be able to fill in on our it debt It turns into a game. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a mental game. Like, where, where else can we cut? Yeah. Yeah. Where else can we increase income? Yeah. Yep. yeah. And every month we're like, yeah, we're 150 bucks under budget. Let's go. Yeah. Like, it's not that much, but it's so exciting. Yeah. Um, Throw it us. at it. Throw yeah. it at it. Y'all are almost too unified. Did y'all ever have a fight? <laughs> we don't fight about money. No. 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 This... Um, we were on the same page pretty much before yep. FPU, but this really solidified not just money, but just all aspects yep. of our marriage, I think. Yeah. yeah. Good good. What was the hardest part? I think getting started, like Cole said. Yeah, that is hard. Um, but I also was surprised. I think I was disappointed by people's reactions when yeah. we would tell them that we were doing this. Saying no, telling each other no for things was hard as well. But just the reactions that we would get, this was such like an exciting thing for us to start on. And so many people were doubtful mm -hmm. or like, that's not going to last. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of hard to yeah. kind of hear that from people. Well, you kind of figure out who your friends are. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, you are Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, it's bad. It's so bad. Yeah. You're never going to make it. You're always going to have a car. Yeah. Oh, now I know who Eeyore is. I always wondered who he is. Uh, that's it. So, yeah, good for you guys. You. Very, very well done. Hey, we've got the uh, Live and Give bundle for you. That's the box that has all the goodies in it for you to give away and live. Baby Steps Millionaire's book, which is your next step for sure. Mm -hmm. The Total Money Makeover book to give away. Maybe one of those doubters or maybe one that needs to get moving. <laughs> Same thing, Financial Peace University membership for you to give Absolutely. away. And all of that's our gift to you to say thanks for coming down. All right. Are we putting a uh, little baby in? She, she's KO'd right now, but we can. <laughs> no, you don't have to. I just no, that's, just, that's a sacred moment. Let it let it ride. Let it ride. If, she, yeah. if she's chill, I'm good. I, I don't care. I just didn't want you to. I don't want to lose you the opportunity. Oh, if you here she to. comes. We'll just we'll leave her okay. in her little seat here. All right, that's perfect. Yeah. What's her name? <laughs> Presley. Presley. All right, Presley. You have no idea that your parents are heroes. <laughs> they have changed your family tree, little girl. Yeah, that's how old Rachel was when I filed bankruptcy. So you oh, guys, wow. you guys are in a great place. I'm so proud of y'all. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. All right, Cole and Abby Presley, hold your little ears. <laughs> All right, one hundred ninety-six thousand paid off in thirty-four months, making one thirty-four to one seventy-three. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Debt yeah. 
That's how that's done. <laughs> uh, I don't even think Presley woke up. That's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I think she's used to her dad being that intense around the house, so it's all right. It's all good. He's yelling at football, too. That's so there exactly you go. right. Uh, he's more of a spreadsheet yeller, but it's cool. He still yells. <laughs> Loves it works. It works. But I'll tell you what. If the first 34 months of your marriage, you can learn to uh, align yourselves together on goals you set yourselves up to fight any battle to win any game that you run into after that, don't you? Well, it reminds us of that call we took earlier. This is what we this were talking about. Opposite. This is exactly what we're talking about. You decide where you're going, getting there becomes just a, uh, it, it's a totally different trajectory. Yep. You're not riding side by side. You're riding in the same car, going to the same place, building the same life together. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is hallow. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, is my co-host today. Travis is with us in Philadelphia. Hi, Travis. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, Dave. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, Dave, is, 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 I, I've been praying, and this is actually a blessing speaking to you. Um, what's going on in my life around that, Dave, is that me and my wife are at Crossroads. Uh, we have two small children. We've been trying to do the baby steps for almost eight months now it's, it's not working we're not we're not getting past baby step one it's always some kind of emergency things are happening that, uh, and we're just not getting there um but we the crossroads we're at right now is that uh i did get a we have a lot of debt we have about forty thousand dollars in auto loans um about ten thousand student debt student loan debt and twenty thousand like credit cards I have an offer to get a new job that's going to pay. I pay. I make about thirty-seven thousand now. I got a job offer about like fifty-four thousand. It's not the best job in the world. Just working a correctional officer. It's something I'm not too fond of, but I'll do it uh, for the money to get out of debt. But also, we have a lot of equity in our home. Uh, our home is worth about maybe upwards of about uh, three hundred eighty thousand. We have about two hundred thirty thousand left on the mortgage and we can sell and we can get that equity. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. You, you owe, you owe two thirty, and it's worth two eighty. Three eighty. No, it's uh, three eighty. Three eighty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. About three eighty. Uh, the real estate agent said we should go, uh, the price should price it at like four ten, but because it's, things are selling pretty fast in my area. Yeah. So, so you've got a hundred, a hundred, $150,000 you might have coming to you if you did that. If we did that. Correct. And, and where would about, you live? 
I live in Pennsylvania now. We moved to, I have a job offer in November for the city of Dallas, um, for the police department in Dallas. And um, that's that's where we moved to. We moved to Dallas. We have a, I have a good friend of mine that lives out there. He's been working out there for about a year now, and he's been trying to get me to come out there. Yeah. And so we can move to So you have Dallas. a solid, written job offer, not a vague promise from a friend. No, I, um, I have a solid written job offer in November. Yeah. I will start the academy for the police department out there. I got it. And, uh, um, okay, so you are planning on moving anyway. Why no, would you ask me if you should sell your house? Of course you're going to well, sell your house. You're moving to why, Dallas. Right, but the reason why I say that because, um, like I said, I have two small children. I'm just at a crossroad. I don't know if that's the best. You know, I don't know how safe Dallas is. I, don't, I have a friend who said it, it, it's pretty good, but, you know. How we, safe we, Dallas is compared to Philadelphia? Well, I'm not. I'm not actually in Philly. I'm, I'm about 90 minutes away from it, and uh, in, in the Pocono. Let me say it this way: My dad was a homicide detective, a beat cop, and then a homicide detective for uh, almost two decades in Houston. And he raised me and my two siblings. And I wouldn't trade my childhood for anything. Okay. Okay. If okay. you continue to always look over the edge, what if? What if? What if? What if? In a weird way, you're going to create those scenarios in your life. Right. What would you pay? What would you be paid if you went to Dallas? Um, starting salary for off out there is about sixty, sixty-six thousand. That's the solid offer they gave you in writing. Correct. And okay. then you get out of the academy, and then what does it go to? Um, that that I don't know, but I know going into the academy about sixty-six. Okay. Okay. So you're almost going to double your income. You're going to sell your house, move to Dallas, and be debt-free. And you've got no state income tax. Yeah. Uh, this right. is kind of a no-brainer, no brainer. Travis. You'll have no debt. You need to put the house on the market and go to Dallas. And you rent for a year in Dallas, figure out what's the best place for schools and for that's going to fit your family's lifestyle and what y'all are comfortable with, and then you're going to put an offer on a house. Yeah. You're right. It makes sense. I, 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 was, I was just afraid of, you yeah. know, just moving to a bigger city, uh, the crime, uh, the, you know, just, just everything. Just would it be the best. Turn, hey, let me tell you something. Turn the news off. You literally have a friend on the ground who lives there and works there, and he says, I love my friend. I love you enough. You should come join me. And you're like, ah, I don't know, because I watch your the news. Your friend wouldn't tell you, come down here and get your children killed. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're okay. right. So move right. to Dallas. You're right. Dallas is not a crime-ridden okay. city. It has crime. Okay. Every city has crime, but it's not right. crime-ridden. It's not infested or something. I don't. This is an ill, an ill and, and you want to be a cop? I was gonna say. So, I mean, this is kind of like, <laughs> part of part of your. We hope uh, there's a little crime. You wouldn't need a job. <laughs> part part right. of the academy right. <laughs> is gonna be pushing you real hard to right. see risk ahead. And go anyway, because right. that's what you're, that's what police officers do. Risk when the rest of us are running out, go right, anyway. they go yeah. in. Yeah. And so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to wash that part out of you, man, because this is the job. Okay. The, the, job. La the last thing I want you to do though is, when you clean all this up, you you guys have to get on a budget, and you have to quit freaking spending yeah. money you don't have to buy cars you can't afford in the future, and on these stupid butt credit cards. So you all have not been living on less than you make. You bought cars you couldn't afford. You bought other crap you couldn't afford. That's how these credit cards got there. So when you clean all this up, if you make 66 and you go to spend in 75 and you go upgrade your dadgum cars and go back in debt, well, then I'm going to come kick your butt. All right? No, you're not doing that. All right? You're going to live on less than you make. You're going to clean this mess up. This is your one-time good time reset. You don't get to do these yes, resets very often. Yes, yes. So take advantage of it, dude. Jump online and get every dollar of the budgeting app. And you and your wife start budgeting. Get the house on the market. Find Go to RamseySolutions.com and, .com and get, get one of the real estate agents that are Ramsey trusted and get your house on the market. Dadgum, man, it's October. you got to move in a month. Get your butt in gear. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Game on. Game on. Let's, you, house ought to be on the market this weekend. You need to, you need to go. It's time. And you're going to be one of those guys that's like, well, I need to clean it. I need no, to make sure that the— Listen, loading up the truck and heading to Beverly, baby. Let's go. <laughs> 
Sell the house. Sell the house. Where we're going. Let's go. The gutters are how the gutters are. Sell the house. That's it. it you, you know, get out there and clean it up this weekend. Get those kids in gear. Trim the bushes. Mulch them. Let's go. Game on. Game on. Uh, Dan, Game on. I, I'm hearing this more and more. I hear this on my show with some regularity, and I think it's important to just note there's so many places to get information these days that it does overwhelm the mind. Well, and here's the problem. Half of what is on the internet is garbage. Is not even true. Seventy five percent. It's not real. It's not true. I pulled up a website yesterday with Ken and I on the air mm -hmm. uh, that's got Dave Ramsey's exotic car collection and my picture and all of the cars that I own. Only I don't own any of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're fabulous cars. I wished I did, and I own a few nice cars. It'd been cool if he'd put them on there. But no, he's got all this wonderful vehicles on there that I don't own. That website does not exist for me, Dave. <laughs> I, I'm just like Abraham Lincoln said, everything on the Internet is true. That's I right. mean, come That's on. Right. You know, oh, my gosh, people. Yeah, you just got it. You got to quit just feeding garbage into your brain. And then because, you know, well, I read an article that said John Deloney or Dave Ramsey was this or that. Well, you can write an article on anything. It doesn't make it true. Right. People just make up crap. Well, and that's why... I, you know, because they're mad or their feelings are hurt. That's well, why oh, it's well. important to have incredible, trustworthy men and women in your life that you can call and say, hey, is this a good deal? And like, man, you're going to love this job. It's going to be great for you and your family. Move on down here. Yeah. Then... That, well, that, I, I don't know you, of a better endorsement. That guy doing that for Travis... Is a thousand out of a thousand. Travis reading about something on the internet right. is a thousand out of a thousand the other direction. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, there, there's crime in Dallas. Well, no, of course there did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's everywhere. Right. But um, at least in Dallas, there's no, anyway. Yeah, it's there's, yeah, do it. I, Texas, yeah, do it. Make Texas great again. Yeah, let's go. Game on. Whew, there's so many places I could go with that in a minute and a half, and I'm not going to. All right, open Please phones don't. here Please don't. at 888 825 5225. I should increase the hate level around here. I don't, I don't do that very I think often. We're, I think we are good. You think we got I have, think you we think the hate level is high enough? I think it is as high as it needs to be. Okay. <laughs> I think we should increase the love. Okay. Let's increase right. the love. Okay. Well, that that's harder. <laughs> it is harder. <laughs> it is harder. <laughs> Sell your house, uh, man. Let's go, Travis. Travis, get that house on the market. Get moved, man. Send us a photo of you in your uniform when you get out of the academy. We'll be rooting for you. Yeah, you're on our team, man. We love you. Keep it up. Get after it. Get after it. Get after it. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thanks for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and host of the Dr. John Deloney Show on the Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today. His new, build, new life, building a non, new life, his new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, comes out in under one week this coming Tuesday. If you want to get a great deal on it, it's only $20 right now, and it includes on pre-sale, if you do it before Tuesday, $75 worth of extra goodies. So go check it out. The book will help you work through and uh, deal with properly the preparation so when anxiety comes with the six daily choices you've made, not if, but when it comes, you will know how to deal with it. Uh, so pick it up at RamseySolutions.com. Get started. Lynn is uh, going to start this hour off in Philadelphia. Hi, Lynn. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. It's such an honor to speak to you. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? 
Uh, I actually have a two-part question. Um, not sure if I can get to both of them, but my first question um, is really starting to, something's really starting to get to me. It's affecting my family and my marriage. Um, my husband is taking responsibility um, for his parents, my in-laws' finances. He's has created them a budget. He's paying their bills for them. He's um, going as far as controlling their expenses. Uh, I'm not sure this is healthy, and it's causing friction. Is he using and, their money or your money? He's using their money. Okay, so it's not costing you anything. How old it's are they? Costing- How old are they? Um, they are in their late seventies. Okay. And why is this not healthy? Do they need help? Um, let's just say that them doing it on their own, they haven't been doing very well themselves. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and I think my husband is just afraid of, you know, them overspending and, yeah, but you Damn, you said that you said this is not healthy and it's driving you crazy. So why it's is it not healthy? Me crazy. Why it, is it, it not healthy I, and why is it driving you crazy? I don't think it's healthy because he's taking over and doing it himself. Um, we don't agree with it, so he's causing friction with us. Um, and it's not that they're not able to do it. It's kind of like he wants to do it for them because he thinks he'll do it better. Could it be that he knows for 79 years I've watched my parents fail at this and they're getting really close to falling off a financial cliff that as my as their son I'm going to feel some sort of obligation to help out with and I can I can stop them from driving off the edge? Is it that? It is uh, 100% that, which I'm okay with, but he's kind of gone – a little too far not just giving them advice but just basically there's something else deeper why don't you do you not like them i love them they are my second parents i lost my parents at a young age when we just uh we've been married for 25 years so they've become my second parents um so what's what's the thorn in your side on this you know i think it's that i i think you know, partly it's that they can't do it themselves. Okay. And so are you mad at them or him for that? I think I'm mad at them. Okay. So let's make sure the and, anger's in the right direction. All right. And? And I – probably part of me is just kind of bummed that the time that we should be spending – together on our own finances is kind of going toward them. All right. That's a totally different conversation. One of those conversations gets wrapped up and you're, and you are pressing your husband up against a wall saying it's me or them. And he's looking and saying, I love you both. I dedicated my life to you. I said, I do to you. You're my wife. And I'm watching my parents sliding off the edge. The real question you're asking is I'm really frustrated that two grown people who I love haven't and won't and can't seem to figure out how to take care of their money and my husband is the kind of man who steps in that gap but i don't want that to come at the expense of our marriage and our relationship and our time together planning for our future and so husband can we spend time together focusing on our finances that's separate then you shouldn't be doing that with them you see what i'm saying i do one of those makes him have to wall up and pick and the other says is makes calls is a challenge are you going to be, are you going to be um, my partner in this deal? And are you going to continue to dream with me on what our house looks like? So you voiced to him that you're frustrated. I have. He, okay. knows, um, okay. he knows I'm not a fan of the whole situation. Okay. So I, let me tell you what I think I heard you say. And if I was wrong, tell me, okay? Okay. I think I heard you say, I'm frustrated because these two grown-ups won't be grown-ups. I love them, but I hate irresponsibility, and I hate the way that they are just so lame when they don't have to be, and that aggravates me. And I'm also aggravated because you're taking time away from us that I really need to have some things done over here on our finances before you go over there. Uh, You pretty much nailed it. Okay. Why don't you say that back to him that way? I, I think that's a really good idea. And can I throw one twist in there that's going to be hard for you to say? 
Sure. <laughs> Can you say, I am proud that you're the kind of man that um, sees his mom and dad in need and however frustrating it is, you're willing to step in that gap? Yes, that's super important. Yeah, I do agree. You are proud of his character. You just you, you just hate it that they're being so lame and I gotta yeah. tell you, I kinda agree with you. <laughs> well, yeah, it's super frustrating. I'm aggravated at both of them. They're perfectly able bodied and able minded to do this and they're just too trifling to do it, right? You're yeah. Yeah, you're, and that aggravates that, that aggravates people that are responsible. Right. And you know, that that's I, I agree with your aggravation. Um I just don't think that uh your aggravation is gonna fix it. Because yeah. you're not you're being aggravated is not gonna make them suddenly responsible. Correct. And so they're either going to run in the ditch, as John said, or over the edge, as John said, um, or your husband's probably going to do what he's doing yep. because, you know, they may have seven years, they might have 10 and, um, you know, and they're either going to be a burden to you all financially because they completely wreck the rest of their lives here, or your husband's going to do this because they, the chances of these people changing their habits, the old dog, new tricks at this stage, probably pretty low. Is that fair? Mm. Yes. And yeah. can he go too far? Can he say, hey, I'm going to help y'all not fall off the edge and suddenly become their mommy and daddy all in one? Yes. Yeah, and it's okay to call on, call, call that out. Call him out on that. Yeah. But, yeah. Sounds like you got a good man stuck in a weird situation, and it's frustrating, frustrating. Let's work towards you, the solution. You have a, a valid frustration with their irresponsibility, but not a good solution. He's got a better solution. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Lauren is in Chicago. Hey, Lauren, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for all the work you guys do for um, American people. I um, have been listening for a couple months um, to a lot of the different shows, and my husband and I... I I'm learning a, a little, and we are okay. We've made um, you know some good decisions and some bad decisions based on the Ramsey way. But right now, we're looking at wanting to pay our house off. We don't have any other debt. And how do people do that? Like, is it okay to just set aside the money and then pay it off in one lump sum, or what is what's the Ramsey way, or is there a recommendation, or a book? No, it doesn't take a book. It's just early and often. Every month, send as much towards the house payment as you can send. Okay. And what happens is it lowers your balance. So the next month, more of your regular payment will go towards principal than in, than it would have if you hadn't. Let's say you sent $10,000, okay? Well, you no longer have to pay interest on that $10,000. So the, in, the monthly interest on that $10,000 less will be low i mean on the balance will be lower than uh than it was by ten thousand dollars you follow me i do i i understand that um i guess like my husband and i and i agree with it completely that's what i've learned and understand however 
my husband's more comfortable with having a um, lump sum available just in case um, anything happens with the house, any emergency. Yeah, before you start paying off your house. Do you, do you have an emergency have a, fund of three to six months of expenses? Um, we have an emergency. We have about 160000 um saved and then we have invested. Okay, your husband's theory is ludicrous. What do you what is he expecting? I mean, what, kind of, to what kind of what do you think is gonna happen? Armageddon? <laughs> your cash won't be good. Yes. There will not be ATMs yes. during Armageddon. <laughs> this is wow. so funny. Thank you for the laugh. Yeah. That's, no, that's, yeah, we're, no, we're, no, no. What what do you owe on your home? Uh we just I'm so grateful to God. We uh we we lived in like a thousand foot How much do you owe on your home? Four. Oh, six, uh, 633. I'm sorry, okay. 633. Right. We just what what I would ago. do if I woke up in your shoes is I would take three mm-hmm. to six months of expenses, given that your husband likes to have a little bit more, let's say six months. of What's your household income? 250. Okay. All right. So let's be super generous. Okay. Set 100,000 aside. That's more than you need. That's more than six months. Okay. And call that your emergency fund. It's a ridiculous emergency fund. Set a hundred thousand aside. Everything above a hundred thousand is cray cray. It needs to be going on the house. It's just there, you're not going to have hundred thousand dollar emergencies. Can I ask another dumb question? No, not dumb. These, These aren't are dumb, dumb questions. questions. These are great questions. Do you ever recommend if, like, you have investments? Do you ever recommend taking those out and putting it towards the house? Always. Or no. Always, unless they're Always? in retire- unless they're in retirement account. Okay. You want to know why? Single stocks sell them. You want to know why? Why? Because when we studied the largest study of millionaires ever done in North America, over 10,000 of them, we never found them saying, we invested instead of paying off our home, and that's how we became millionaires. None of them say that. Okay. Almost all of them followed the model of a steady, reasonable amount of investing like in their retirement accounts, then paid off the home and then increased their investing when the home was paid off. And so the typical person was, say, a million and a half dollar net worth, their first one and a half million dollars of net worth, had a five or six hundred thousand dollar paid for home and about a million dollars in their 401k. But the number of them that said, oh, we never pay off our house. Instead, we invested more and more and more and kept the house debt was almost zero. It was less than 10 percent. Thank you. That's helpful. Okay. So the data says that the best and the fastest way to build wealth is get the house paid off while steadily investing about 15 percent of your income above an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. So if you guys making 250 have squirreled over in an investment a half million dollars, I'm going to tell you get this house paid off next 12 months and take that money in there. Now, not taking out 401k money, but I'm talking about you've just got a, you know, you've got a brokerage account of some kind over here with a half million dollars sitting in it. Take that and the 60 above the hundred and throw it at the thing. Let's get this house paid off. Cause I got to tell you, if I ever get your husband to pay off his house, he will think he's a genius and he'll never, ever, ever go back in debt on that house. Well, and <laughs> I want to make sure we point we, we touch on this. this. He's solving for safety. And right now, safety for him is having a bunch of cash. Yep. And and non retirement investment. That's right. And he's hedging his safety against all these other things and he's got this big elephant sitting in his living room. And you we've joked about this off air before. No one has ever called the show and said Man, I'm really mad at y'all because I paid my house off. And I'm and six months later, Dave Ramsey told me to pay my house off. I I'm wish pissed. I had my mortgage back. I love my mortgage. You could I miss all, it. you say it all the time. You could always go take out a mortgage six months from now if you don't like it, right? If mm-hmm. you don't like having a paid for house, but you think you're you think you're solving for safety with all these extracurricular activities, try sleeping in a house that you owe nobody anything for. That's a level of safety that you didn't know your body could feel until you go do it. Yeah, I'm telling you when when you have. Let's just talk about safety, okay? When we have a Fauci quarantine Mm -hmm. and the whole freaking place shuts down and your house is paid for, it feels a whole lot different inside your physical body than 
having the same amount of your mortgage in a mutual fund. Because there's a part of your brain that's been there for eternity that says, you're going to lose your house. Your, your kids are going to be on the street. Yeah, because 100% of foreclosures happen on a house with a mortgage. That's right. Versus being real frustrated, right? Yep. Just, uh, being annoyed and frustrated. That's different than, I can't breathe, right? Yeah. I mean, I had uh, we had business stress. We had relational stress uh, because of disagreements. But Dave and Sharon were always going to be okay. Uh, uh, over the COVID, you know, we found out who our friends were, who, who were all worried about little COVIDs jumping on people and all the stuff we did. We dealt with all that stuff, uh, but we didn't deal during the Fauci quarantine with the threat of foreclosure. Right. We that was lose not in there. And so when you're solving for safety, that was a for good phrase. I like that phrase. You know, you, you probably need to really correctly define safety. Right. And get the elephant out of your dead gum living room, right. which is the living room, by the way. Yeah. Ironically, <laughs> it, it's uh, in the way we said it before. We had a John with two PhDs to help us understand it. Was if your house is paid for, take your shoes off, walk through the backyard. The grass feels different. You breathe different, and um, you work. You won't work at a toxic place anymore because you have to. You're not stuck anymore folks and so the solving for this is you know when i first started teaching this stuff i thought well if you got rid of a house payment you invested a house payment you can turn that money into a million dollars pretty quick and that's the math part the financial part but there's an emotional part a spiritual part a relational part a medical health a mental health part i you know someday it, it'll be done I, I don't know that i'll ever get around to doing it but a study of the um, medical condition and the life quality of life and longevity of life of people who are debt free versus those that aren't. There's, they're quietly starting to, to leak out into the world where people are doing mental health and emotional health and debt and starting to use that correlative data. It's, it's, it's pretty frightening. Yeah. And I've talked to some doctoral students who are interested in doing their dissertations on student loans and people with debt versus the mental health of those who don't owe anybody anything. Yeah. And if you think about this, think about, think of all of us um, um, have had the moment in our career when we think, oh man, I got to go have a hard conversation with my boss. I may not survive this one. Imagine your wife or your husband can put your face in their hands and look at you and say, hey, we're going to be okay. We got plenty of money. Go yeah. tell the we truth. We got plenty of money. We got no house payment. Go tell the truth. Go be you. And we don't have any house payments, man. Like that's a different conversation. There we go. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Spencer and Jordan are with us in the Ramsey Solutions headquarters lobby on the debt-free stage. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey. Pretty good. Welcome. Where do you all live? Terre Haute, Indiana. Just, Terre Haute. Uh, just I north. love it. Yeah. Very good. Good to have you. All right. How much debt have you two paid? We paid off $150,000. We sold our house. Wow. wow. How long did all this take? Uh, th- well, selling the house took a couple months, but uh, we lived in the house three and a half years, and we downsized from 3,000 square foot to about 1,200 with a family of five. So, Whoa. Uh, but hey, no mortgage payment, so it's uh, worth it. Hardcore. Wow. Way to so go. So are you all renting now? No, no we, we bought it with cash or what we made from our other house. So, yep. Oh, so you bought a house, so you don't have a mortgage. No, no mortgage. mortgage. You're debt-free, Nothing. debt-free. Yep, debt-free. debt-free. You sold the house, bought another house with the equity, no mortgage of any kind. Yes, How sir. old are you two? I am 31. 32. But in order to do this, you moved into a tiny little place. Yes, yeah. sir. And I, no regrets. I no love regrets. it. <laughs> okay. Way, yep. way but, but, And clean. you don't have to be there forever. It's a step. Yes, it's a okay. step. And, and you're 32 years old. And what's this house worth that you're living in? Uh, 130, 135 range, okay. I'd say. We, we actually just cash flowed a remodel on it, too. So, um, okay. So, it's, so it's, it's pretty nice. Okay. And we can live there for a few years and then move up. Easy, easy, yep. easy. And uh, so, okay. Again, th- so this ho- whole experience has really did gone down pretty quick, right? Yes, sir. But uh, we actually uh, grew up in, in you know, Ramsey um, uh, foundations, right? We, we have family members who have followed the um, baby steps and mm-hmm. have passed that on to us. Um, Jordan actually has a great story with the total money makeover. Yeah. When I was a junior in high school, my parents saw that I was not great with money mm-hmm. and they were like, we'll pay you $20 to read the total money makeover. So great $20. Um, it did not stick until <laughs> I got married. So not a great twenty dollars. But no, no, I, it was spent probably the next day. But I, I inherited thirteen dollars <laughs> when we got married. So. Yep. <laughs> yep. Part and, of uh, that twenty dollars. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, big shout out to my mom who's uh, followed Dave Ramsey for a long time in those steps and uh, all the way through college. Um, we were able to to kind of cash flow. So this this all this stuff was around in your childhood. You're kind of financial peace babies in a mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, but once you decided, okay, we got this big house, we could sell it, we could buy another house. You did all that within a matter of months. Yep. So really, like four months or something to be debt free right. once you make the call, right? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. So did you have other debt to pay off too? No, we paid off my student loans. Um, it, when was it? Uh, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a, a two and a half, three year gap of no loans, no, no you debt. Know, being debt free. And then we bought the house 2019, sold it um, earlier this spring. So, so what lit y'all up? What, what said like, Hey, let's leave this big, nice house where everyone's got their own bathroom and room and let's get out of this mess. Yeah. You know, we just, it was a, it was, it was a great, it was a big, beautiful house. And we just were like, you know what? We want to change. And we knew that that wasn't our forever home. Um, so we were like, why are we paying this big mortgage when we could downsize, be completely debt free and then save for what will be our forever home? Mm. Way to go, you guys. Very yeah. cool. What's your household income? Right now it's around 110. What do y'all do for a living? I stay home and homeschool our three kids. Mm-hmm. And so. I, I'm currently in the Air National Guard working in IT and then my civilian jobs in IT as well. So Wow. Good for you. Good career for you. Y'all are both awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, guys. You're heroes. Okay. Congratulations. So, um, to all of the young parents out there who say there's no possible way you could have three beautiful, rambunctious little ones. Uh, what is the oldest one? What? Six, seven? He's nine. Nine. Okay. Yep. So you got nine and seven and five? Yep. Yes, sir. You can't possibly have a family of five in a 1,200-square-foot house. Oh, it's awesome. How do you make it work? Bonding. No. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of bonding. Yeah, the boys share a bedroom, and Remy, our daughter, she has her own room. And honestly, it's probably been a lot harder for them than it has for us. It's a lot less cleaning, a lot less maintaining for us. And I think they're getting used to it. A lot of times outdoors, <laughs> but we haven't uh, gone through winter yet. So we'll see how <laughs> cutthroat it is. That might be the deciding is. factor. January, yeah. February range. <laughs> I yep. had one sibling. I grew up in a 1,000 square foot home. Yep. So, um, and um, yeah, wow. Yeah. It's amazing when you look back. I went over there and visited it not long ago. It kind of shrunk. Yeah, that's so. Is it like going back to your elementary school? It shrunk? Yes. You know? yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But I, I think you guys are going to be great. I'm so proud of y'all. 
Yeah, it's, it's not a long term play, really. It's a yep. short term play. Yep. It's a it's a sacrifice, and we knew it when we when we bought the house, and we actually. Um, you know, you think about a thousand bucks a month going to the bank and it's like, you know, what, what could we be doing with this? And knowing that we were going to, um, buy a, a forever home from a family member, um, in the future, um, you know, we can be saving that and, you know, treat this house as a, as a rental for the kids yeah. as they oh, go yeah. through school. And, yeah, that'd be uh, great. But no, it's a, and with the homeschool stuff. So in your all's case, you made this with one fell swoop. You grew up with some of these things around you. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Because your story is different. Um, for me, it would just be the budgeting was the hardest part for us, I think, was just sitting down and making a budget. And I feel like it's gotten even harder now that we are debt free is sitting down and still maintaining that budget. But I think that that's what I tell people is get on the same page, sit down, write a budget, do what's best for your family. Yeah, the discipline and the um, the reminder that it's God's money, right? Be a good steward of it mm-hmm. and uh, the lesson for the kids and all the way going through the house selling and the house buying process with them by our sides. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of um, well, you took a step to, back. So I, I think looking at you from the outside looking in, I think your secret was contentment. Yeah, You're willing to be mm-hmm. content with that as a step uh, I'm gonna live like no one else so later I can live and give like no one else being countercultural and and knowing that it's um, just it's God's will doing it so we often tell people don't sell your house to get out of debt because you don't you don't go through you don't learn the lessons but y'all y'all were debt-free for three years before you sat down and said let's go do something radical yep yeah very well done good job you guys I'm proud of you very cool all right bring the kiddos up let's hear their names and ages have they been practicing any debt-free screams? A little Just bit. since we've been here. Uh, okay. This is Grayson. He is nine. Mm-hmm. Mylan, who's seven. Mm-hmm. And Remington, who is five. Go Remington. All right. I think Remington's in charge. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime a family has their kids come up and they all just stand in a straight line and they're respectful and kind. That's great. That's very cool. Makes me want to be better at being a parent. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's very amazing. good, you guys. Hey, we've got the uh, Total Money Makeover book for you. The uh, Baby Steps Millionaire's book. That's the next chapter in your story for you and the Financial Peace University membership. You can live some of that. You can give some of that. Thanks for coming down here from Terre Haute and sharing your inspiring story and your beautiful family. You guys are amazing. Way to go, heroes. You're heroes. You took control. Those little babies right there, their whole lives are changed because their mom and dad are grown-ups. Very well done. Spencer, Jordan, Grayson, Mylan, and Remy. I got to love it. From Terre Haute. 150000 paid off in about four months. Sold their home, moved into a smaller one, so they had it all paid off, making 110 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt-free. debt-free. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Fabulous. Fabulous. In 1963, the average family in america had a 1000 square foot one level home one car Hmm. that was the average family in america today the average family in america has 2.5 cars and 2900 square feet you would tell you something wild about that besides just the cost um one of my plans to go down a nerd rabbit hole is there's some quiet conversations about families over the last you know centuries and thousands of years have grown up together. You could hear each other breathe. You could see each other. And that one of the causes of anxiety may be that everybody from, you get into the bassinet, you get your own room, and you're on the other side of the house, you're on the other side of the house, you're upstairs, someone's downstairs. And you're all on screens. And everybody's alone, and everybody's on screens. And there's something about bringing the family back together that that's kind of, sounds kind of neat. I don't know it the data kind, on it. kind but, of regulates everything. But it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting thought. Regulates their bodies. Yeah. Overnight, we stuck everybody in their own room on the other side of the house, and I don't know that we're designed for that. It's an interesting thing to think about. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Joe is with us in Springfield. Hey, Joe, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Dave, thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I've been listening to you off and on the last couple of years. It hasn't, a lot of things haven't soaked in, but the other day you said that nobody should own a new truck unless they have a net worth of a million and they're debt-free. Mm-hmm. Well, I bought a new one earlier this year, and so my question, number one, is should I sell that truck and downgrade and get something a little bit more economical so that I can pay it off? Uh, how much do you owe on it? Uh, 43, mm-hmm. no, 42 and some change, so mm-hmm. 43. What's your household income? 220, 210. And you don't have any money? No, I have uh, I have about 40 in the bank right now. Mm-hmm. How long have you been making that kind of money? Oh, years. You're making good years. money. Why do you not have any? Well, I'm, my wife kind of lives YOLO. I kind of live like, hey, we might live to be 500. And it's just, it's been 15 years of just kind of, we've sat down, we've put budgets together, and it just, it, uh, it doesn't stick on one end, and it does on one, and uh, I've just kind of learned to compromise to keep the marriage happy. and uh, But the marriage isn't happy, man. I can hear it on you. It's frustrating. I mean, I love her to death. Wouldn't trade her for nothing, but it's frustrating. Well, you sure. know, when you have a divided house. Um, yeah. You know, like, I hate Christmas. I hate it. Hmm. Um, you know, we spend $4,000 every year in Christmas, and it's to people and friends. and And every year we argue about it. And it just gets me where I just hate Christmas, you know, because I know we're just going to blow a bunch of money and we shouldn't and we don't have to. And, okay. yeah, you know, you, just, you move on, you know. You can either dwell on it or you can just move on. And and I, then, I and then you on. borrowed $40,000 on a truck. Yeah. Yes, well, I, I'm a sales guy, so I have to have a truck that's less than three years old and so many miles. I get paid eight fifty a month for my truck allowance. And Whether you have a car so payment or not. That's right, yeah. and that's where I would rather tuck the eight fifty and throw it on the house. We're in a great situation on the house. House is yeah. worth about six six and a quarter. We're down to about two seventy on it. Okay, um, Joe. Joe, like the, uh, the, the truck, the truck, the truck needs to be paid off, or it needs to be sold. But it's ten percent of your problem. Okay, the problem okay. that's screaming at me in this conversation is you make way too much money to be this broke. I agree. And you guys have really got to sit down and address that. You're just, you're, you're just, we have. a quarter. No, you haven't. You guys just not fixed. What do you, but what do you do? When? Well, I think you need, if you can't, if you and your wife can't sit down and dream about a future that you're willing to control yourselves for, because you're not controlling yourselves, you're, you have no self control in your household. And if you, the two of you no. can't find a house, a dream in, in high definition that the two of you can agree to that is worth working towards together and worth not spending everything we make to cause it to happen, then you do need to sit down with a marriage counselor if that's the case. Often, high performing, high earning folks sit down and have this conversation as a math problem. Honey, we make this much money. We got to make a budget. You know, I have one. I have an Excel sheet. I can show you. I, I know you do. It does, you it's not good. It's useless. Years. Here's what I'm telling you. There's a different conversation when you sit down with your wife and you hold her hands and you say, honey, I can't breathe. I'm so scared. 
We make way too much money. I'm working so hard. And I feel like you and I are full and pulling further and further and further apart. And I love you too much to be frustrated at you all the time because I know that's hard to live with. And I love you too much for us to pretend that we're all joyful and happy once a year at Christmas and we th try to throw money at our friends and family instead of being a warm, safe place for them to come land. Would you build something different with me? That's a different conversation than, honey, look at my spreadsheet. Look at this. If you just would do this, then we could get out of this crap. One of those, she's going to go to her defense, and that defense is probably way older than you, and that's probably been there since she was a little kid. And then you go to your defense because she starts bombing you back, and it's different when you take ownership and say, I want my wife, and I want a family. that um, I want a, unific a unified front here. I want a unified vision of what we're going to do, and I'm scared to death I'm going to lose you. The irony is, is that you think by acquiescing you're creating peace, and you're not. That's the irony. The fire's burning in the basement, and it is hot. It's coals. Yeah. and Because it's, you, you, it's, it's eating you up, and she can feel that on you. And then she goes about solving that feeling with the way that her body's been solving those feelings for her whole life. Spending. Spending and trying to make people feel good about themselves and showing people how great she's doing. And that's different than y'all two building a life together. Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys can't sit down and work that through and start to say, we need to develop a new vision for our future, a different plan, other than just spinning our wheels, feeling like a rat in a wheel, I'm scared. I can't do this. This is killing me. I cannot live in a situation where I make a quarter million dollars a year and we have nothing. That is just absurd to me. My brain can't do it anymore. My mind can't do it. My psyche, my spirit can't do it anymore. So we have got to develop a plan for the future that we're both willing to work towards. And I want to do that with you. Let's start fresh, a, res a reset, not we've got to get on a budget. Sometime, but, okay. but that will lead you, by the way, to a budget. And it's not a spreadsheet budget. It's an every dollar budget. But it will lead you to the two of you working together to implement the plan that you have agreed to together that both of you had a vote in i love starting those conversations with i'm sorry i'm sorry i've tried to control you the way i know to control a problem i've tried to solve you i've tried to fix you i'm sorry let me tell you the truth i'm scared to death and there's a different there's a different approach there someone can enter into your space that way instead of uh having to swing back at you it's tough hope that works for you brother and then pay that truck off in the next 20 minutes um or couple months and or sell it one of the two that's um because it's you know you went and bought a truck while she went and bought christmas i think you <laughs> yeah you showed her man i think you spent more so um there you go and the 850 is coming in whether you have a truck payment or not so that doesn't justify it our question of the day is sponsored by neighborly your hub for home services most american homes have dozens of appliances and chances are at any given time something wrong with at least one of them mr appliance a neighborly brand offers expert appliance service on your schedule visit neighborly.com today to find home service experts including mr appliance in your area Today's question comes from Jane in Florida. I pay the bills for my elderly father. He has a bad habit of going to the ATM to withdraw money several times a week. A lot of times it leaves me with a balance too low to pay his bills. I've had numerous talks, threatened to stop helping, etc. etc. He apologi apologizes and promises to do better. Then in a few weeks, he's right back to the same situation. I don't want to be disrespectful to him, but is it real it's really stressing me out. What do you recommend I do? I'm not going to help you with your bills anymore unless you give me your ATM card. Yeah. I'm unable to help anymore. Unless so you give me your ATM card. I can't, I can't participate. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you're, you're making this too hard. Yeah. You're sabotaging everything I'm trying to do to help you. I'm trying to love you, and you're, clearly, you're telling me very clearly you don't want my love and support and help. Yeah. So if you want to give me the ATM card, I'll keep doing it. If you don't, then I won't. Yeah. That's fine. I still love you. But I'm not going to spend all of my time resenting how you're living your life, and then you come to me asking for help. I don't want to resent you. You're my dad. I want to love you. So... I'm either going to turn this over to you or you're going to hand me your ATM card. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. I can fix that. And it's not a flex and it's not, it's not showing your muscles. No. It's just saying, hey, no. I, I'm choosing to not do this anymore. I can't. Yeah. This is, this is an absurd dog chasing its tail. Scenario. Keep pulling you out of the pool and you just keep jumping in. If you want to stay in there, uh, man, it's tough. I keep getting you out of the road and you keep running back out there. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it, well, it's, um, it's frustrating because a it's someone you love and b they're hurting themselves and um 
And see, it's so cyclical. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's circular here. It's a dance. The whole thing is circular. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Stop dancing. Bad Florida two-step. There you go. This is The Ramsey Show. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, is my co-host today. This hour, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, Baby Steps Millionaires, people who have become millionaires. We want to talk to real millionaires. You see, when I started doing this radio show in 1992, over 30 years ago, I had this idea, and I still do, that if we taught God's and grandma's ways of handling money, live on less than you make, have a written plan, get out of debt and stay out of debt, steadily invest and save, and be outrageously generous. If you do those five things consistently in your life, that over a period of time you would become wealthy. It's a mathematical fact, number one, but number two, it's just the fastest right way to become wealthy. And now here I sit 30 plus years later, and there's lots of you have become millionaires doing this stuff. Lots of you. And if you did it following the Baby Steps, we call you a Baby Steps Millionaire. You do not have to be a Baby Steps Millionaire to be on this show today, but you do need to be a millionaire. And for some of you that are new to this, let me help you with this. A millionaire is an accounting term. It's not a feeling. I don't feel like I have much. It doesn't matter what you feel. Couldn't care less about your feelings. This is not a feelings show. That's John's show. <laughs> uh it is, uh, no one should have that much money. Well, this is not a moral construct. It's not a discussion of wealth inequality, although I can go there if you want me to. Um, it, it's not any of that. A millionaire is simply an accounting term. It's your net worth. Well, he's a net worth millionaire. That's the only kind of millionaire there is. It's a redundant statement, okay? Your net worth is your what you own minus what you owe, assets minus liabilities. When that equals a million dollars, Regardless of what the assets are, regardless of what the liabilities are, when assets minus liabilities, own versus O equals a million dollars, you're a millionaire. And it's not as much money as it used to be. It might not be enough to do some of the things you want to do, but it's more than most people have. There's about 17, millionaire, 17 million millionaires in North America. So they're out there. They're all around us. I meet them every day when I'm doing the show. Every single day when I take a break during this show at a commercial break, I walk outside and someone comes up to get their picture taken with me. I sign a book or two, and I always meet at least one millionaire every day. And they came by to say, hey, this is the place. This is where I learned all this stuff. This is how it's almost like a, a visit to uh, a, a shrine uh, that caused them to be able to do it. Now, obviously, we didn't do it. We didn't give them any money. We just said you could do it. We made you believe you could do it, and we showed you how and what the steps are and the tactical moves with money. But there's no magic pill here. And here's the truth. It can be done, and we're going to prove it by talking to real millionaires today. Blake is with us in Nashville. Blake, what's your net worth? My net worth is like 5 to $6 million. Good for you. Okay. Give me a little breakdown by category on that. 
Yeah, so um, I've got a couple million dollars in stocks slash mutual funds, a mm-hmm. uh, couple million dollars in uh, some uh, a real estate property, mm-hmm. uh, and then the valuation of uh, the couple businesses is between you know one to three million dollars. Okay, all right, in a business. So then I got about a hundred thousand cash gotcha. on hand. So how old are you? I am thirty-two. Actually, be thirty-three tomorrow. Wow! So. Happy birthday! And how much Thank of this five million did you inherit? Uh, zero. The only thing I inherited is a uh, common sense and financial sense. So that's, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's the only thing I've inherited, but no. Well, dude, 5 no million at 33 is pretty stinking impressive from zero. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so what has <laughs> been your best year decisions. income and your worst year income since you've been working the last 13 years or so? Well, I own my own business. Uh, and, uh, of course, starting off it, that took, you know, no income you know, 13 years ago. Um, uh, but, my highest year would probably be last year and did right at uh, seven figures, right at a million. And then this year, we're looking at um, doing about 60 to 70K a month. Okay. And we're talking about profit here, taxable income. Yes, sir. Way to go, man. What kind of a business have you got? Uh, actually, it's a, a, a martial arts school. I, I do own some properties too, but um, I grew up doing martial arts and uh, when I was 19, I uh, opened, uh, uh, opened a school, and uh, that's been the rest of history. So it's it's been very fortunate to be able to take a passion and make a career, you know, not only change my life, but those around me as well. Very cool. You have a four-year degree? Yes, I uh, have a uh, degree in uh, business finance. Mm-hmm. And what was your GPA? Um, I in 2012. Um, gosh, probably 3.6, okay. 3.7, something like that. Okay. So you would say, I think, if I'm listening to your story correctly, that the way you became a millionaire was you were very successful in business. Correct. Yeah, I've, I've uh, always tried to learn from other people's experience and wisdom and try not to duplicate some of their mistakes. And, and uh, uh, yeah, just a lot of good decisions and planning things out. And uh, I lived with my parents till I was about 26. So you have to pay everything off and make sure that uh, you know, I was financially set. I spent some time doing martial arts myself, not nearly with the lifelong commitment you've made. How much of that slow and steady and just discipline and doing the same things over and over again, how much of that have you, have you used in the business world? Because it sounds like you've, like if I look back, you've moved really quickly to gain this much net worth, but at the same time, it sounds like you've just been pretty methodical and pretty wise about your next steps. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, martial arts, the self-discipline that comes with martial arts, you know, I started when I was eight years old. Uh, and I think that uh, the discipline that I learned from that uh, kind of bled over into uh, my uh, being able to make good financial decisions. And, you know, I tell my students before you can learn to do something, you have to learn to do nothing. And, uh, you know, just take your time and think and plan things out instead of making, you know, irrational decisions based on emotion. Wow. Okay, there's a 19-year-old version of you out there. What do you tell them the secret is? Um, I think it's a kind of a two-part, uh, two-part uh, secret uh, or answer, I guess. But um, I think the the first thing is being able to find a mentor, uh, someone that you that you look up to, whether it's you know your based on your financial, uh, you know goals financially, or whether it's a relationship or faith, um, and then follow them, listen to them, and then part two, like we just touched on, is being able to have the self discipline to follow through with it and do it, you know, consistently. Dude, you're a stud, man. You're a hero. Well done. That's absolutely amazing. Starting from nothing and uh, $5 million at 33 years old. Happy birthday. Wow. Leave your contact information with Christian on the phone there because I've been looking for a school for my two kids, and you're exactly the kind of man that I want my kids learning from. So leave your your school info. Uh, You just knocked my socks off, my man. Very cool. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. This is a Baby Steps Millionaire's Theme Hour on The Ramsey Show.
It's a Baby Steps Millionaire's Theme Hour. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225 as we take questions from only millionaires. Actually, we don't want to take questions. We're actually going to give you the questions. We're going to interview you and find out how you got here. The misnomer is that millionaires can't happen in America today unless you're a movie star or a sports figure or a music icon of some kind. And the truth is among people that have a million dollar net worth or greater, those three categories put together account to less than 1% of the millionaires. Hey, you had, you wrote about a thing in Baby Steps Millionaires that it was a light bulb moment for me. If, I would love for you to talk about it a little bit. You have a section called Millionaires Are Not Billionaires. And I thought that was an instructive conversation to have. Well, yeah, it's it's um I think sometimes when because the the whole thing on millionaire became a thing in the twenties. Because a millionaire then was a lot of money. That's a know, billionaire. In the nineteen twenties. Yeah. Probably a billionaire, yeah. And and so it was like the game Monopoly was developed about that time, right? And so everything was around this idea of acquiring and building a net worth of a million dollars because that was rich. That was became the definition of rich. And easy street you're gonna be on easy street and so then but what has happened is over the years then the people think it's not attainable to become a millionaire which is a really good place to be as a minimum starting point going into your retirement mm -hmm. it's not necessary that you're there to live but you you know that that sets you up for a pretty strong golden years it does not set you up for opulence Okay, and so, like, for instance, n no millionaires, almost no millionaires own a jet. Almost no millionaires own a $400,000 Lamborghini or seven cars. Okay, almost no millionaires have uh, a house uh, at the beach, a house in the mountains, and a house that is a house. Most of them have one house. That's it. So it's a, it's a, that's instructive for me because when I think, I could never have a no because that's not the goal. Well, I mean, it's not the first goal. You right. could get there, but a bit. See, a billion is a thousand million. Hmm. When you think about that, it's a thousand times more than a millionaire. Well, yeah, they've got a jet. Yeah, they've got seven cars, and yeah, they got four houses, but they got a thousand times more money. <laughs> that's it's still a uh, it's still five percent of their net worth, right? Exactly, exactly. But I mean, it, it's a it, it's so. But what, what I, the reason I wanted to point that out is in the book and when we're talking about it is not that a billion is bad and a million is good. That's not the point. Or, or that you, but, but if you think of I'll never have enough money to have a jet, a house, three houses, and seven cars, then you're not thinking about a million dollars. You're thinking about a billion dollars. And so, yeah, that is – there are a lot fewer of those. Right. You know, when I started this show, only 300 of the 400 Forbes 400 wealthiest people were billionaires even. Now 100% of them are billionaires, and it, it requires, prob uh, you know, quite a several billion to even be on that list. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, but that's, you know, the, the number of billionaires there are in America, whoa, way less than millionaires. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to be a billionaire. If you want to call me and tell me how you got to be a billionaire. Oh, by the way, you're not going to become a billionaire mathematically with your 401k. Right. And your paid for house. But you will become a millionaire with those two things, uh, which is the first step. You know, the first one to five million to hit there. So, uh, you know, but but you don't talk the, uh, of the people on the Force 400, the billionaires. 67% uh, of them are first generation. They did not inherit their money. Two out of three. That's that's a bunch. I mean, so that says it can still be done, but uh, like ninety, uh, not a, I think all of them. I'll have to go back and look. I looked at it one time. It may be one or two that inherited money of the ones that made it. The, the started from nothing. All of them owned and ran big businesses. His business, yeah, lightning struck. Right? Yeah, they, yeah, they, you know, Michael Dell, Dell Computers, right? Bill Gates, Microsoft, right? Apple. Uh, you know, you go through and you look at the tech world. You go through and look at. Um, uh, 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 
you know, uh, Elon, Kathy family, Chick Fil A, okay, Elon Musk, um, you know, those Elon and uh, uh, Buffett are the two number number one, number two, and Bezos, you know, but Bezos started his, Elon started his from nothing. Yeah, they both came from nothing, and so, but that's, but but don't confuse those two if uh, it because it can lead you to losing hope that it can be done. Because the millionaire is very attainable. Mm. Billionaire, you gotta you gotta run a business. Probably not. You gotta not run right. a big business. It right. can be done, yeah. but you're not gonna do that with your four hundred one k. Not mathematically. Not you can't put enough in there to get there. It's that simple. Margaret is with us in Washington D.C. Margaret, your net worth uh, five point six million. And Good I feel for like you. I'm slow to, I feel like I'm slow to the dance based on that last caller because he's thirty two and I'm fifty seven. <laughs> We're all slow to the dance after that last caller. I'll just tell you. So you're, you're fifty seven. All right, give me a little breakdown on that uh, five point six million. Sure. It uh, our home, um, we beach home, a uh, commercial office space, small commercial office space is um, worth what? Is about three point uh, three point one, three point two. Okay. And the remaining amount are 401ks, IRAs, annuity, uh, liquid assets, um, and just a whole. Okay, so another 2.5 of that. Correct. Okay. All right. Very cool. And you'd be proud of me. I spoke to you last December and you told me you're, I was crazy that I kept a balance on my beach house mortgage because I had so much in cash. And today, after talking to Don, I went to the bank and I paid off the remaining beach beach house balance. So <laughs> All right. You free. can't come on the air again without that thing I, paid off. <laughs> that's what Don told me. And, you know, John, you made me go back in debt because I bought your book today. So. Oh. <laughs> well, if you're going to go back in debt, buy a hundred of them then. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. How much of this 5.6 did you inherit? Zero. All right. And your best year working income, your worst year working income? Combined, um, about 450 between myself and my husband. Mm -hmm. Um, Worst case, probably when I got out of college, maybe making about 36. Okay. And what's your careers? Um, I'm in sales. I work for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, My husband's an attorney. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I've always been in business for myself. And I always say I have a great boss. Okay, cool. Well, obviously, he has a law degree. What's your degree? Um, it, uh, my undergrad was education in Spanish. I was going to be a Spanish teacher. Mm-hmm. And then I got into the computer field. And then at age 50, I got my master's. In, and, in uh, business, MBA? No, actually, I, I have a love for nutrition and food studies and wanted to become a nutritionist. But then I found out there's no money in it, so I stuck with my business. All right. But love I still it. do nutrition on the side. Love it. Okay. And what was your GPA? Um, as a master's, it was 4.0. Okay. Um, undergrad, I didn't really, that was terrible, like 3.3. I should have Oh, it's awful. Better. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. I've got, I've got two hard questions for you. Um, the first one sure. is, how much of that did you steal? St- uh, uh, zero. <laughs> all right. All right. I thought yeah, y'all were all crooks. Depends. Yeah, no, no, none at all. All right. The second one is, how many books do you read a month? You know, I'm ashamed because I, 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 I don't. I, I read probably two a year because by the time my kids, I mean, my, my son just graduated from college, my daughter's in college, and I'm exhausted. I still open the books and I fall asleep. Fall asleep. So I tell you, I've, been, I've been there the last few months. Hey, so that makes, that makes me even more grateful that you read one to two books a year and you bought his book. You bought mine. That makes my heart full. Thank and you. And I have your other book as well. And I do, I do, I am reading Intentional Living by John Maxwell. Um, and uh, so um, I, I, I just don't read enough. I'm embarrassed to tell don't you Don't be that. embarrassed or ashamed. You should read anything John Maxwell writes. He's awesome. Yeah. We, love, doing, we love John. You're doing great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. My book will for sure put you to sleep. So. <laughs> Dave, I have to tell you really, really, can I tell you something really quick that I had told Donna and she said, you got to tell Dave this? Sure. I made a stupid mistake when I got out of college. I had a Mazda RX-7, beautiful California ocean blue, me and my husband at the time, my ex-husband, and we couldn't afford the tires. They were going to be over $1,000 to put new tires on. So I thought I was a really savvy business business person. I said, let's go to the Honda dealership and let's lease the car for $200 a month and uh, we'll save ourselves $800. <laughs> That's how stupid. I mean, that was, that was probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. And then you still ended up with five point six million by fifty-seven. You overcome the thousand-dollar tire deal. Well done. <laughs> awesome. Way to go, Margaret. Good talking to you. This is a Baby Steps Millionaire's Theme Hour on the Ramsey Show.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. It's a Baby Steps Millionaires theme hour. Anybody that has a net worth of a million dollars, you're welcome to call in. We want to know how much you got, how you did it, so that other people can learn from you, learn what we call in business best practices. How'd you do it? So we can do it. Zach is with us in Salt Lake City. Zach, what's your net worth? Hi, Dave and John. It's uh, one point eight million, somewhere around there. Excellent. And give me a little breakdown by category. So, a paid-off house. It's around a million dollars. Um, IRA, SEP IRA, and and a brokerage account invested in mutual funds around four hundred and fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. I've got a CD with two hundred thousand dollars in it, and then our you know high yield savings with one hundred and fifty thousand. That way to go. How old are you? Thirty-seven. All right. Very good. And how much of this did you inherit? Zero. Zero. All right. I love it. Very Zero. good. Cool. Cool. And your income, your best year and your worst year? Best year was around 650000 Whoa. And uh, worst year was around 50000 Okay. Cool. What do you do for a living? Yeah, I, uh, I run a sales team mm-hmm. for a solar company. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, cool. You four-year degree? No degree. No, no degree. I, I went for three years and, and uh, I found out sales is my calling, and, and so I, I never finished. But but $650,000 later, you figured it out, huh? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, man. Very, very Dang. cool. All right, what do you yeah. tell the uh, younger version of you? Is it still possible today to become a millionaire starting from nothing like you did? Absolutely. In fact, I think it's it's probably easier today than ever. To Why? Be familiar. There's a lot of good, a lot of good opportunities out there, and uh, uh, you know, I, I think I wish I'd have known years ago. I, I called in to the show last year, and um, I was actually a, a net worth millionaire last year before I started following your plan. And I called in, and you you gave me some encouragement to go ahead and pay off my house and and everything. So I, I wish that I'd have started younger. Um, I always lived under my means, but I, I wish I started following, you know, avoiding debt and, and investing younger. And one one thing that I do want to say is, is uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, disagree, I guess, with paying off a mortgage early. They say, hey, you should keep that money, you know, keep the mortgage and invest the money or whatever. And I, I get their argument, but the thing that I really like about what you teach is once you have that mortgage paid off, um, it's a lot easier to invest into retirement and, uh, and other things. I, I'm investing a lot of money right now every month on, on autopilot. And I, if I would have had a mortgage or car payments, I wouldn't be doing those investments. And that's probably the best argument I've heard from, from Ramsey on, on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, my contention also is, and, and I ask you about this because it's interesting to me, um, is that when you're running a business, a small business like you are, um, uh, that you make different decisions when you have zero debt at home. Absolutely. I'm more confident in the decisions I make here at Ramsey because I don't have to worry about the home front. I agree. Yeah. And therefore I think, I think I end up making more money here because of that. I think I agree. I think I I agree. There's no desperation decisions. It's, it's a lot easier to make a sell when you don't have to make the sell. It, yeah, because yeah, because uh, broke salespeople smell bad. They do, and yeah. you can also break up with those customers that are just driving you mad. Um, you could say, <laughs> you know, I'm going to move on because I don't, I don't, I don't need this. I don't have to have this so that my family can eat. And yep. hey, so while we got easier. you, you got a lot of money in CDs and a savings account. Are you saving for something big? Yeah. Yeah, we actually have a, a family friend that uh, he's developing some land up here um, about a mile or two from my house. It should be ready in the next year, so that's why I, I've been piling ah. the money up there so that when it comes available, I want to I wanna buy a lot with cash. Good news, Deloney. Fantastic. Hey, and one more thing. So yeah. um, you're a good case study for me. I'm always telling folks, listen, I get the – if you're one of those folks who bought a house at 2.9%, I get – the math problem there. It's an excellent math problem in your favor, especially when you look historically. You had that. You had a house on the front end of this, and then you're a millionaire, and then you thought, I'm just going to pay this thing off. What kind of peace do you have in your house? Do you feel Uh, different? Tell me if I'm crazy, because I don't mind being wrong. In fact, I'm wrong a lot, but 
Is it? Does it feel different? It's my. It's yours. It feels a lot different. What, what Dave always says about you know walking barefoot in the grass, it just feels different. It, you don't really know that feeling until you go ahead and, and pay off the house. And so I, I'll never go into debt again. And, and a lot of my friends kind of laugh at that and they think, oh, you'll, you know, when you build a house, you will. And I said, no, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to save up and, and, and maybe go a little bit slower. But it, it's silly to me to think that I had a mortgage and, and, and car payments before. Now that you're out of it, I don't want, ever want to go back. And, and the feeling is really, really good. Yeah. Way to go, amazing. Zach. I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, you're a stud, man. You're a hero. Way to go. Very proud of you. Good work. Ann is with us in Columbus, Ohio. Ann, your net worth? Just at $2.5 million. Love it. Okay. And uh, how old are you? I'm 46. My husband is 52. All right. Very cool. Give me a little breakdown by category on the $2.5 million. It's one point seven in retirement. Six hundred in our paid-off home, a hundred thousand dollars in cash, and another hundred in other miscellaneous investments. Very good. Twenty nines and a perfect that mix. Sort of thing. Well done. Yeah. How much of this did you inherit? Well, a few years ago, many years ago, I got four thousand dollars when my grandmother passed away. <laughs> okay, so it's safe to say you are not a millionaire because of an inheritance. No, but I do have good parents. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. Hey, I just I want you to know if you watch this They're on YouTube, still alive. I just laughed, but not at your grandmother's passing. You set this up, and I thought you were going to say I got a million dollars, but you said yeah. uh, I got four thousand bucks. Yeah. So, what's your best yeah. year working income since you've been working, and your worst year? Well, our worst year was back during the beginning of the stay-at-home mom years, and it was about. 70,000 mm-hmm. and our best year will probably be this year where it should be around 440,000. Wow. But um, it's only been like that the last so many years since we're empty nesters. Yeah. So most of those years were, you know, under 100,000, 100 to 150. We went back and looked and um, where we are today, especially from the retirement front, is based on what we did during those years where we didn't make a lot of money, it's much less based on what we do today. How okay. what we're doing today. I hear you. Yeah. So what what do you what do you do for a living and what's your husband do? What's your careers? Um, we're both mechanical engineers by degree. I work in marketing and he works in project management. Okay. And I assume you have engineering degrees, both of you. Yes. Okay. And your um, GPA? Uh, well, so remember the engineer, it was a three point for me because that's what I needed to keep my scholarship or my parents were making me pay for school. And it was 2.7 for my husband's undergrad. And he actually got accepted into a master's program conditionally because they were concerned about his um, 2.7 GPA, but he worked full time all the way through college. Yeah. Wow. You guys are incredible. What's your advice to the younger version of you listening? Uh, One really important thing is be very intentional about who you marry, somebody with shared values, shared goals, somebody who's hardworking. Take FPU early. Um, Taking Financial Peace University, we didn't take it till 2013, and it was rocket fuel. We had a lot of the, the basics in place, but... That's really what brought everything together. Wow. Thanks for the ad. That was awesome. (laughs) Just amazing. Very well done. Thank you, Ann. We appreciate you. You're amazing. I'm so proud of you guys. Way to go, Eero. This is a Baby Steps Millionaire's Theme Hour on The Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Philippians 4.12, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. David Lee Roth said, money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a big yacht. (laughs) (laughs) A yacht big enough to pull up alongside it. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Well done. Uh, Wayne is in Chattanooga. Wayne, your net worth. Hey, uh, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Um, $3.4 million. Good for you. All give, right. How old are give you? Or, give or take. Give or take a month. You know how it okay. works. How uh, old are you? I'm 62. 62. All right. 62. And give me, a little break, give me a little breakdown on the $3.4 million. All right. So... I will say, let's say nine years ago, I had about a million dollars, Dave. Um, and since that time, uh, and, and that million dollars was in a, a tr- mostly in a traditional 401k. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, you know, taxable. Um, and since that time, I've made a few uh, real estate investments um, and have basically in that nine years changed that million to over three million dollars good for uh, you through multiple some of it being um residential and then uh you know um one of those investments was uh, a commercial investment so um yeah that's kind of where it's ended up um i, I I'm, I'm debt free uh my home's worth approximately four hundred twenty-five thousand, um, and that's kind of where I'm at. Good for you. Well done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. And what was your? How much of this did you inherit? Well, <laughs> that's a funny story. Uh, my father passed away when I was very young. Uh, I inherited uh, seven thousand mm-hmm. um, dollars, and as and I was a teenager, uh, at that point I. I bought a car or a truck for thirty five hundred bucks, so <laughs> left me with thirty five hundred dollars, and so I decided my grandfather was a uh, he invested, and I didn't know anything about it, but what I did know is I knew that it 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 really my grandfather was he ended up very wealthy, so um, I wanted to kind of follow that path. So I went to the bank and the banker said to me, he says, uh, yeah, you know, I had $3,500. He said, just put it in your savings account. I said, well, I'm not really, I don't really want to do that. And uh, so I, ultimately I put in 30, I put in $500 into a savings account. And then I had $3,000 left and, and through the help of my grandfather, and I was 17 years old at the time, uh, Help me invest that into a uh, mutual fund, um, which was a Fidelity Magellan fund. I'm sure you're familiar oh, with that. Yeah. What's it worth yeah. today? Uh, hundreds of thousands no of bad. dollars. I never, I never touched it. No uh, That's incredible. And it, um, and, and I think for the younger, the younger generation to understand what investing is about. I had to go to a facility. We, we had to go somewhere, make an appointment in order for me to invest that three hundred three thousand uh, dollars. And it and there was a fee attached to it. It was it was a process. I mean, today I could do that in sixty seconds. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and I and I believe today building wealth is so much easier than it was when you and I. We're growing up. You're right. Um, you're right. And and so is destroying it. Both are easier. It's it's so is destroying it. It it absolutely is. Um, but I think I, th- I think it's 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 so much easier today. If I if I were myself back then, uh, planning today, it'd be so much easier. I'd be worth tens of millions of dollars more. Yeah. I mean, there's no question. There's no question about it. If I knew then uh, what I know now, wow, well, absolutely. Way to go, Wayne. Proud of you, man. Excellent job. Dave, I, I, I'm, I'm just struck. Now, this is a small sample size, but everyone we've talked to today has been generating wealth significantly. Several of our callers said they've had their best years this year or last year recently. Mm-hmm. 
And every shred of news I get from every angle of my life is how the economy's falling apart. There's no way to get ahead. Everybody, everything's awful. It's all coming down. And all the calls we took today, people are saying, well, it's, it's the time. And Apparently someone uh, decided not to participate in the recession. High interest rates and high – we can't do it with – they're just – they just are. One guy's a salesman. Somebody else is a salesman. Somebody else is a – it's, it's, two salespeople, uh, an attorney, a martial arts uh, owner, two mechanical engineers. Um, best year ever. Best year ever. Best yeah. year ever. Yeah. Yeah. This year. This year. This despite year. Despite the year. inflation. Despite five, nobody spending five any money. Point, five million. Five point six million. One point eight million. Two point five million. Three point four million. No one inherited anything appreciably. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was substan- nothing substantial that made them a millionaire. And so the idea that all millionaires are inherited money. Seventy nine percent of millionaires in our study inherited zero. Another 5% inherited a small amount, like these $4,000, $7,000, but not enough to make you a millionaire. And another 5% inherited substantial money after they were already millionaires. So 5 and 5 and 79 is 89. So that will help tell you that 9 out of 10 of America's millionaires are first-generation rich, did it without an inheritance. So when these left-wing nut jobs tell you that it's all over and the only thing that's going to work for you is Karl Marx because their college professor who's a communist told them that, uh, and then they tell you that it's impossible to get ahead in America. I'm telling you, the actual data says nine out of ten millionaires are first generation rich. Hmm. It's it's such it's so counter counterintuitive. It's so counter narrative. Both, both counter narrative. It's not counterintuitive. Not counterintuitive. Counter narrative. At, at the macro level, at the you just can't get ahead anymore, and then at the micro level, it's all coming down. It's all coming down. It's all coming down. It's just not. Yeah. It might be, but it doesn't look... I mean, everybody's having the best year of their life, man. It's $100, $100 a month invested from age 25 to age 65 at 12% in a good mutual fund, and the stock market has averaged 11.6 for 80 years, okay? But so, you know, it, it, $100 a month invested from age 25 to age 65 is $1,176,000. $100. That's with no match. That, that's with, you know, no magic and TikTok mirrors to buy nothing down real estate that you can't afford. Or shirts, T-shirts on four, on, on four payments. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, there's no payments involved in that. Uh, but people can't find $100, you know. And, uh, and the reason is they got a $750 truck payment. And the reason is they got a student loan that during the last three years when there's been no interest, they paid nothing on it. And come Sunday, bloody Sunday, here we go, man. Man. Uh, I mean, it's uh, this coming Sunday is the when the student loans start back, October 1, baby. It's here. Life is real. Mm-hmm. So we're going to send a team to uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah. And do some man-on-the-street stuff Monday because that's uh, when the student loans have started back. Mm. The government might also shut down by then. Because the children in the sandbox throwing crayons at each other. <laughs> Good gosh. Billy kicks sand in my eyes. He's a Republican. <laughs> I don't like Dan. He's a Democrat. Eh, it's my, it's my, it's my sandcastle. I, I want to put $2 billion in for uh, rat research in, into the budget. And we if you don't, keep voting for these. And if you don't do that, then we're going to shut down the government. You know, so... You know what? It would be kind of cool if they solved some of these problems with with dodgeball. You voted them in. I voted them in. It's our freaking fault. We we do this to ourselves. Man. I don't know one person that's like, man, bang up job. Bang up job. Yeah. Anybody's doing. I think you guys are just amazing. The efficiency by which you govern. Did you see that thing that uh, Warren Buffett said? It's like amazing. But he said, oh, I could solve the the deficit tomorrow. Yep. You're all fired. Yeah. Well, or you don't. You get zero pay until you get the budget balanced. Oh, by the way, I saw that. Um, all the uh, federal employees will lose their paychecks when they get shut the government down, but not the uh, Congress. Congress. Not the Congress. Nope. Nope. Uh, we vote ourselves an exemption because we're incompetent. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.
Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.